Both my parents were uh, in the Air Force. Uh, they were stationed first in Minnesota. I ended up moving to Texas in 1988. The choice was a Dias Air Force Base because they had doctors, had experience with child psychology, which military doctors had not. Um, I had been diagnosed with major depression at the age of eight. Problems at school and at home, um, developmentally, um, and also at school, trying to concentrate while being heavily sedated. Soccer was the first sport that I played, and then I saw that it was more than just about soccer, and to go even further, it was more than just about winning. We come from different places, but we're the same. You see it in our faces, we love this game. We love this game though, it's not a game at all. We feel anticipation, we've got that burn. We've come for competition, we've come to learn. And from each other, we learn about ourselves. Bipolar disorder is, is tossed around, you know, like, you know, you have anger management issues, so you must be bipolar. So we're just going to med medicate you with this, and that'll solve everything. And if not, we'll just adjust it next month, and then the month after that. There's a new medication. We're going to try that one out. Going cold turkey off of medication, telling the doctors that I'm just going to do it my way because it's insane to do it your way, you know, for the last... 20 some odd years, my mind has been a black hole of misinformation and, and you know, having my choice taken away from me. I came to New York to break the cycle. It was basically New York or bust. I was either gonna make it, be successful in, in, in changing my life around or I was gonna die here in New York. The first place I took shelter was uh, Bellevue. That's intake for the shelter system here in New York. They assign you uh, an HA number, housing authority number, and you basically register as homeless person in New York. Something was just guiding me. When I saw the posters over at Help USA and, and somebody had invited me and then I saw that they're actually playing soccer inside of the gym. I was like, all right, so I was, it was all about it. Kicked the ball around a little bit and I was hooked, like immediately. Couldn't stop thinking about soccer. You know, the whole night, the next day. When's the next practice? You know, can I get a ball? Can I get shoes? After like years of being in and out of hospitals, not wanting to trust people, um, and then I come into an environment where they say, just take this ball, and we're gonna show you a couple things about it, pass it around, and um, that's pretty much it. And just that little bit was my therapy for like the last, almost three years. A Street Soccer USA is a uh, nonprofit organization where we use soccer to transfer job and life skills to homeless youth and adults, men and women, um, in 20 cities across the U.S. Ronnie is one of our greatest examples that soccer has the power to change lives. He now has a home, a job, and coaches at the shelter where he used to live. The more and more that I played, the more and more I fell in love with the game, and then my teammates, and then the organization itself. You know, I'm, I'm always skeptical of new things that I try, and you know, it's it's one of the most real things. It's it's almost scary to trust and believe in something so much that you know you would give everything that you have for it. I believe if it wasn't for street soccer, I'd quite possibly be dead. I, I just couldn't imagine not having that in my life. I, I think at some point I will have many things you know, going on, many more things than I have going on right now, but this will always be a constant. Um, to either coach or be a mentor or to go to a practice, it's something along those lines, but like, I absolutely definitely need 
this and, and hope that I can give back what I've learned you know, to someone else, anyone else, anyone that's willing to take it. My mental disability affected me in the service with too much stress, work overloads, time constraints. Like everybody feels a bit of pressure. Mine seems to be magnified. Not having any results from my visits to the chaplain or my visits to sick bay. And I felt very disappointed that I asked for help and wasn't given help. So my discharge from the Navy is an other than honorable discharge. Basically saying whatever good you've done, whatever achievements you've gotten, whatever awards you've received, uh, is trumped by what you did wrong. So I received no benefits, I received no GI Bill. I cannot go into the VA and ask for services. They'll refuse. My thoughts were is we were gonna get spanked. It's like, you know, who are we to come into Latin America and say that we're going to play football against all these guys? American footballers, South American footballers, the odds are the, you know, South Americans are going to win. Most of us hadn't been to Chile or even maybe even seen a picture of it. It's important to acknowledge things and those things that trouble you, you have to at some point just let it go. Because if you're worried and stressed about that one thing, you don't have room to fill that with something else. When I decided to salute my flag, regardless of what my government or the Veterans Association feels about me, I was in uniform in a different country and I was representing my country, you know. So what if I wasn't carrying a gun or driving a tank? Why can't I salute my flag? You know, I'm proud of my country. When they blew the whistle, I can say we all kind of looked at each other and, and were like, yeah, we just did that. I have another very important moment when uh, uh, Donnie and I talk a little bit that uh, it was not uh, all about soccer, that we have uh, more important goals. And uh, Donnie came later and told me, you know, uh, how he wanted to play this because we put uh, different goals on top of the soccer, but we like we were rewarded because we achieved the other goals plus the soccer. And I think it was an incredible decision and, a, and it was a, one of those moments. Thank you. So Street Soccer USA brought back the Amistad Cup, which is the runner-up cup. As far as I know, that's the highest award that Street Soccer USA has ever brought back from another country. I, don't, I just felt it was necessary to, to not give up. I, I, I was hurt, I was in a lot of pain. But I mean, it's, it's like, I can't come all the way over here and just give up. You know, that's I break my leg. That's the only way you're gonna take me out. You know, um, that's the only way I'm gonna give up. I'll still probably go out there with crutches. Um, I bet. But, um, I think everybody did their part. Everybody has a different skill, and it came out. Mine is, I, I don't I don't stay down. But I, we came all the way, well, you know, and, and Donnie said it best. He said, we came all the way over here to play for somebody else. And, 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 and that's what it's about, right? As a soccer player, once 
once we started to, to earn that respect, the warmth that the, the, the people showed absolutely found a home in Chile. My home is, is anywhere I choose to, to go and, and have fun and meet people and, and do something different and learn. That's my home, so it's, it's ongoing. <laughs>